The question is about President Obama's trip uh, to Israel. Uh, he's going to Israel. He'll make a side trip to the occupied territories, but the, 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 the original planning was for the trip to be to Israel. And then when the Palestinians found out weeks after the Israelis were negotiating details of, you know, what hotel and security and so on and so forth, uh, they slapped on an additional, you know, trip to, side trip to, to spend 20 minutes with uh, Mahmoud Abbas and a half an hour in the, um, in the Church of the Nativity in Bethlehem. Um, well, you know, I was asked this question by the New York Times for an op-ed that may or may not appear tomorrow morning. <laughs> depending on whether they accept my edits of this. And I, I, they said, I wrote them a draft, and they said, um, well, you have to be more prescriptive. You have to say what the president should do. And I said, well, I said what the president should do. I mean, they said, you're so pessimistic. I said, well, I don't think he's going to do the right thing, but I'm, you know, I'll, I'll try and be more prescriptive. So I tried to be a little more prescriptive. And I don't think the president's going to do the things that I think he should do and say. Um, if the United States does not say that this is a situation of enormous imbalance between a very strong, dominant Israel and a very weak, victimized Palestine, and that we are not honest brokers between two equal parties and we can actually admit our bias in favor of Israel, if, it, if the United States doesn't change that whole structure, we're not going anywhere. If the United States doesn't throw out the whole Oslo framework, we're not going anywhere. But most importantly, if the United States doesn't say the end point of this process has to be a rapid end to occupation, a rapid end to settlement, and uh, that the Palestinians have freedom and equality in this, in this land, however it's divided up or not divided up, then I don't think the United States has much to do, much to say or do. I mean, what they have said so far has been Orwellian language, which covered up the fact that the United States was sustaining, <coughs> enabling, and bankrolling the oppression of the Palestinians. That's what American policy has amounted to, certainly since Camp David, um, 1978. And I say in the op-ed, let him say it, honestly. We support this. You know, that's all we can do in our political system. There's no support for the Palestinians uh, in American domestic policy. The Arab countries don't give a hoot in hell, and they're divided right now. There's unrest in the Arab world. So there's no pressure on us to change our policy. Come back and talk to me when somebody can push me hard enough to make me change my policy. I don't say this in the op-ed. That's what I'm saying to you. I, I, I am very pessimistic about the prospects of a change. And one of the reasons I'm pessimistic is because of the situation of the Palestinians themselves. Um, Israel has been moving steadily to the right, and there are all kinds of issues that we could talk about there. And our policy has been appalling. But the Palestinians are more divided today than they have been at any time since the 40s or the 30s. They have no longer got what they had from sometime in the 60s onwards, which is a national consensus on what they want to do and how they want to do it. Now, they had various ideas that changed over time. A uh, uh, Palestinian democratic state, uh, a two-state solution. But there was, a, there was a consensus. It wasn't unanimity, but there was a consensus starting in the 60s and going right through the 90s on what the objectives would be and what the means to reach those, whether it was armed struggle or whether it was negotiations or whatever it was. Those conditions no longer obtain. There is no Palestinian consensus. There is no clear idea of what the objective should be. What do you want and how do you get it? And until the Palestinians can reunify their ranks and until they can have a sort of a, a de national debate that results in some kind of sense of where they want to go, I think we have a problem. I think the United States could make big changes in, in, in the interim. I mean, we could stop bankrolling oppression, for example. That doesn't require the Palestinians getting their act together. That requires us taking ourselves out of the, the equation in a negative way. There, there's, no quid pro, there's no quid pro quo for stopping being bad. Okay? You don't have to say, you have to do something else. No, if we are sending weapons that are used in violation of U.S. law to kill civilians, we can stop doing that. Those are the kinds of things the United States can do and should do, obviously, unilaterally. Um, but to resolve this, you, it takes two parties that have to be ready to deal. I don't think Israel is ready to deal, and unfortunately, I don't think the Palestinians are ready.